Hello coding friends. What we're doing today is developing the ping pong game based on a template posted to uh, PowerSchool. Uh, we'll be using the P5JS library uh, and starting out with just a basic template zip file. Uh, now I have this in a folder that I'll be using for video demonstrations uh, and I'm just going to open it. If you have a Mac uh, that and you have a default of throwing away the zip file um, and you seem to not be able to find your zip file it's probably in your trash and you can always drag it out into the folder of choice. Now when I unzip this I get a template folder I'm going to rename that to my first game. Uh, the game is going to be ping pong or rather pong uh, the digital version. So when I open this up You'll notice I have a template.html. I'm asking you to rename this to index, though it doesn't matter for our purposes. If you decide to do images or video, this will be very helpful. And I open it up and I get immediately a uh, screen with just a canvas uh, and a blue background. The blue background is dictated by CSS code. And the canvas is dictated by my p5.js uh, template file. Now, one thing that we can do here is we can look at the HTML code. And you'll notice that this is called template.html in the comment. You'll want to change this. And you can change the purpose. And notice I have these two lines right here. These two lines dictate a uh, series of files that will be used for this project. If you change any of these file names, you'll have to change them here as well. This is like the table of contents for my project. If I want to add a new file, I'll simply copy a line and paste and uh, change the file name. Uh, because I know I'm making ping pong, I'm probably going to start out with an object for a ball. I'm probably also going to start out with an object for a paddle. And these are two files that I'll have to create in my JavaScript folder. Note, I'm saying that they'll be in the JavaScript folder here uh, before my program runs. I can keep the name template.js for now for the uh, actual game. And anything you want to add in terms of instructions can go in the body. Uh, you can also name the title anything you want. Um, and you can edit the CSS, which is in the CSS folder uh, under file style.css. Okay, so let's uh, get into the following. Uh, game. Uh, so we're going to work on a game for Pong. Um, now I have another version of this game uh, and we'll see sort of one of the things that we can do with it. So we'll see that um, in a demonstration version of the game you'll have some line down the center, uh, you'll have a ball moving in different directions, um, and randomly attacking one player or the other. Uh, as you can see, the score goes up as the ball passes the edge of the screen. Uh, these are things that we'll want to implement in our JavaScript version of this game. We'll also be able to implement keyboard action for the other player, or as you desire, an AI opponent. Okay, now let's uh, move back to JavaScript. So we have this index.html file, um, and we're going to be now moving over to work with JavaScript uh, itself. Um, I'm going to need to make a ball file and a paddle file, so let's get, it, get moving on that. I'm also going to open up template.js, uh, which is going to be my game file. 
This has all the game logic. Uh, that will be going on with my game. I'm going to move this background line to the draw function. Um, and notice I'm starting with a canvas size of 500 by 500 by default. Um, you may want to extend this to say 800. Um, and this is simply because with a Pong game, you'll want a wider screen. Now, I also need new files. So let's make some new files for uh, for my ball and for my pack. So this will be ball.js. And it's notice it's saved in the JavaScript folder for my ball project, my Pong project, rather. And I'm going to make a file here and save as uh, we're going to save this as paddle.js. And now, as you can see, uh, we have these files in this folder. They're empty. Um, but let's uh, let's get some things on the page. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is let's make a line down the center of the page uh, to act as a uh, divider, um, as we saw in that other game. One way to do that is to just draw a line. So we'll make a uh, um, we'll make a stroke of zero to fifty-five zero. So we'll have a green line. We'll make a line from the middle of the page, which is the width of the page, over two and zero to the width of the page over two and the height of the page. And let's see what this will look like. So if I refresh my page, notice I have this entire screen now at 800 pixels and I have a green line running down the center of my page. This is just for aesthetic purposes. If you don't want this, you don't have to do this in your program. I also know that I need a score. And in fact, I need two score variables, uh, one for player one and one for player two. So I'm going to say I'm going to have some variables, score one and score two. And I'm going to set the initial values inside of setup. And these are going to allow me to post the score to the screen. Now you'll notice that if I refresh the page, I don't have anything there. That's simply because I haven't said to put anything. So inside draw, what I'll do is I'll say something like text size 50. Perhaps that's too big, 20. And we'll say text score 1. That's the text I want to put to the screen. And I have to say where I want to put it to the screen. And so I'll say something like um, width over 4, minus 5, minus 10, and a uh, height uh, or a uh, y value of 10. And let's see how this looks. That's a little low, or a little high rather. Let's change it to 30 in the y position. And now I have a number there. Uh, for my score, and that's going to be my score 1. If I want to do the same thing for score 2, I'll simply copy and I'll shift over to be 3 quarters across the screen instead of 1 quarter across the screen, uh, minus 10 and then 30 down. And you'll notice that an identical number appears on the other end. To ensure that I have, I'm showing both score one and score two, I can change the values and see which ones change. And um, this is uh, now everything we'll need to have um, a nice game setup before I put a ball into play and a paddle and my paddles into play. Now. 
I know that I'm going to have to deal with a ball on the screen and two paddles. I'm going to preemptively set up some variables that can hold those objects so that I can use them in my game. I'll say I have a ball and I'll make a variable for paddle1 and paddle2. And in my setup, I will say ball can hold a new ball object and paddle1 holds a new paddle object and paddle2 holds a new paddle object. I'll come back to this later because first I have to define what a ball actually is. In order to have a ball, I have to tell the computer what I mean by ball. And this is going to be defined inside of our ball.js file. So let's go in here. Okay, so the first thing I want to make is what's called a constructor function. Um, this is essentially where I'm going to be defining what a ball is. So I'll say I have a function called ball. And the definition now for what a ball is will live between these two braces. Don't put anything outside of this if you want it to be a part of a ball. So I know that my ball is going to have an x value. And we'll set it to the middle of the screen. We know that the ball is going to have a y value. And we'll set that to the middle of the screen. We know the ball is going to have a radius. Uh, let's set the not to zero. That would be a point. Uh, let's say the ball's radius is, um, say the ball's radius is 15. And then uh, we also want to know what the speed of the ball is horizontally and vertically. So we'll make two variables to, to hold that information. And we'll say this dot vy is some random number between negative 10 and 10. This can cause problems later, but uh, this is something you may want to work out for yourself. Uh, the issue is if the value is 0, um, we're going to have a very interesting game where the ball only moves in a straight line, horizontally or vertically. OK, now notice I'm using the word this. The word this indicates that the value x is part of our definition of a ball. And it belongs to the ball in a sense. Notice that the variable width has no this in front of it that indicates that it belongs somewhere from, it comes from somewhere else. It's not a part of our ball object. It's, uh, it ends up being a global variable here. Um, and it's, that value is predefined. Whenever you say create canvas, width becomes the first thing, 800, and height becomes the second thing, 500. Now, my ball needs to be able to be seen. So the first thing I want to do is make a function that's a part of ball that makes the ball visible. And so we're going to uh, create a function called show that belongs to the ball. And it's going to determine how the ball looks and where it goes. So we're just going to say we're going to fill with a uh, sort of red in. Let's fill with a green color to keep with this theme. And let's uh, make an ellipse of size. Well, 
what are the arguments of an ellipse? The first argument is the x value, the second is the y value, the third is the width, and the fourth is the height. So which ones are relevant to us from our ball object? Well, this.x defines the x value of the ball. So we'll say this.x. This.y defines the y value of the ball. This.r is the radius of the ball. Um, but notice this is a width, and the radius is half of the width of a ball. So we'll say this dot radius, but we'll have to multiply it by 2 in order to get the full width of the ball. And this dot r, the radius, times the height, times 2 is the height as well, because we have a circle. Finally, we want to be able to move the ball. And in order to, for the ball to be moved, it has to have a move function that belongs to it. So by saying this dot move, we're saying we have created a move function, or a move variable that is a function that is part of our ball. So here, a standard way of moving things around is to say this dot x is increased by this dot vx. And this dot y is increased by this dot vy. Note plus equals is a way of saying is a way of saying add this dot vx to whatever this dot x had. There are other ways to write this. Another way would be this dot x equals this dot x plus this dot vx. But that's a little more wordy and might be confusing. So we're going to use this terminology to denote that we're adding the thing on the right to whatever already existed in the thing on the left and storing it in this.x. The same goes for this.y. So for our move function, you also want to know that our ball is going to have some certain behavior when we hit the top and the bottom of the page, but other behavior when we hit the left and the right of the page. Specifically, the ball when it hits the top of the page is going to bounce. We can handle this with an if statement. We can say that if the x value of the ball minus its radius, or pardon, the y value of the ball minus its radius is below zero. That means if it's above the top of the page, the top of the ball is less than the top of the page because our coordinate grid goes y down is positive. What do we want to do? We want to say this dot vy equals negative this dot vy. We're going to switch our velocity. Now, we also have to do this when our ball, the bottom of our ball, goes below the bottom of the page. And one way to do this, to accomplish this, is to say, well, we're going to do the same thing, but we'll do it whether we're above the top of the page or this double bar is shift and the button above return. It's called pipes. So this stands for or in it for a computer in the JavaScript programming language. And we'll say if this dot y plus this dot r is greater than the height of the page, we will switch our velocity. So our move function is defined, our show function is defined, so let's test those out. I'm going to go back to template.js. I'm going to comment out my paddle information for now because we haven't yet defined the paddle object. But ball definitely exists. We have defined what a ball is right here. A ball is all of this stuff. It has all of this information. And so what we're going to do now, 
underneath our area where we drew our lines and added some aesthetic things, what we're going to do is we're going to say ball.show and we're going to say ball.move. This way we show the ball wherever it happens to be and then later on we move the ball. By move we mean we add the velocity to the x position. When we go back down to the end of this function right here, draws a loop so we will it's effectively a loop, so we will go back to the top of the function and redo all of our instructions, including show to show it at its new location, and move to move it to its, a new location. Let's see how this looks. We'll refresh the page, and you have a ball moving in a random direction. If we get the right combination of things, and you'll notice here, we had no x velocity, we'll be bouncing off the top and bottom of the page because of our if statement. If I refresh again, you'll see another outcome. Now, one thing we can do is we can check to see if uh, we move out off the end of the page um, and then add a score to the appropriate player. Um, and we also need to have some way of returning the ball to the center of the screen possibly with a new velocity. Now, I don't like this white background, so I'm going to change that to a black background first, and then we'll work on resetting our ball and adding score. Okay, so let's go and work to do those things. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our background to 0, 0, 0. Now it looks somewhat better. If we want this line to be thicker in the center, we can absolutely do that. But this is more of a this is sort of a classic Pong arcade game style. Note you can change the CSS to change the color in the background. Now let's write a reset function. A reset function probably belongs to the ball when we want when we hit the edge of the page we want to be able to reset the ball to a new location. So we're going to make this.reset and it's going to be a function and what are we going to do in the reset function? Well, I think it's going to be effective to simply copy the information at the top and do all of that. So what I've done is I've said, hey, when we reset, we just want to return to whatever state we, we, we start out with. Now you can do all sorts of things when you reset. You can increase the speed range. You can um, increase the radius. You can change the location to be a random location. Uh, this is where you can really, one of the places you can customize your game, uh, but we'll leave it as is for now. We've defined the values up here, but we are going to be changing them again any time we have to reset the ball. Note I copied and pasted here. I'm going to personally remove this line 22 because it's not changing in any way. It's not necessary to have here. So what does this look like? Well, let's go to template.js. And what we're going to say here is if ball dot x plus ball dot width radius rather um, is greater than the width of the page, we've we've gone off the uh, uh, actually here. Let's say if the um, if the left side of the ball goes off the edge of the page. What do we want to do? We want to say, if, you, if you're confused about this, you should draw it out on a piece of paper and see that this x coordinate will actually be the left side of the ball. If the left side of the ball goes off the end of the page, we are going to say that the ball should reset. 
and we're going to say that the score 1 increases. Now we also want something to happen if the ball goes off the other side of the page. If the right side of the ball is to the left of the zero mark, meaning if it's off the left side of the page over here, then we want to say ball.bset and we'll say score two plus plus. The second player wins a point. Now let's see if what we've done works. We went off the edge of the page, and our scores are increasing as we go. You can see this here. Um, and it seems like they're increasing in the proper way. That should be a score for the left player, and it was. So the left player is certainly racking up the points here, even though we are randomly generating our position. Now, we need to be able to say that this game ends at some point, um, but uh, let's get back to that in a moment. Okay. So, thus far, we have a game, uh, but no player interaction. So, in order to have player interaction, we'll have to make some paddles. I'm going to uncomment my paddles here. That means I have to define a paddle for my game to work. I'm going to go to paddle.js to define a paddle. Now paddle.js uh, has nothing in it, so we'll define our constructor function. This function again will be our paddle definition. Um, and as such, our paddles are going to need some information. Our information is going to go at the top. We'll probably want an X location for our paddle. We'll set one of them to be zero. But this is essentially going to be our default values. Um, now, I'm going to show you a non-ideal way to do this. And if you want to improve your program in the future, um, you can play around or ask me for, uh, for advice. And we're going to say that the paddles are going to start in the middle of the page. But here's the thing. We also need a width of the paddle and a height of the paddle. We'll say the width is going to be about 20 pixels. We'll say that the height is going to be uh, mm, let's say that our paddle is going to be 140 pixels high. Now, the interesting thing is that we're not actually... These aren't known to the computer ahead of time. These are just numbers stored in variables with arbitrary names. By using them in the right way, we will be able to make something with the functionality that we desire. So the use is what determines what they do. We haven't used them yet, we've just set some values. Now note, I actually want my y value to be the height over 2 minus this dot h over 2. This will make it so that the corner of the rectangle, if this is my rectangle, the upper left corner is the xy location. I want it so that the xy location starts so that the paddle is symmetrically in the center of the page. The only way to do that is to say shift it up a little bit as opposed to um, you know, making the page bigger or something like that. So this is a way of defining 
the center of the paddle to be in the center of the page. Again, I encourage you to draw this out on some graph paper. Now that we have our values defined, we're going to um, we're going to make a show method that's going to be very similar to our uh, ball show method. We're going to fill with maybe a green, and we're going to draw a rectangle. And the rectangle is at this dot x, this dot y, this dot w, and this dot h. Remember that a rectangle follows the same rules as an ellipse, where x, y, width, and height are the values in order as arguments. Now, in terms of moving the paddle, we have a couple options. The first thing we want to do is, let's see how this works so far. We have a paddle 1 here. Let's see what happens when I show my paddle 1. My paddle appears on the page in the center of the left side. What happens if I show paddle 2? Well, unfortunately, it too appears in the middle of the left side. So I'm going to want to offset it so that it appears on the right side of the page. And the way we can do that is in setup. You can also modify values in this way um, for anything that we do later on. I'm going to say that paddle2.x equals the width of the page minus the height or minus the width of paddle2. This is a way of getting it to appear on the right side of the page. Now let's see how that changed things. So I have two paddles, one on the left side and one on the right side. Right now they don't interact with the ball at all. Let's fix that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say first that I need to have some sort of movement of my paddles. One way to define the movement is to say that paddle one dot y, the y value of paddle one, is equal to the mouse y value. Let's see how that looks. When my mouse is down here, the paddle is off the page. When my mouse is up here, the paddle is uh, above, and so on and so forth. One thing you can do is you can say that there's a limit, uh, and that's handled by an if statement. If you'd like to do that, and you probably should, I'll let you figure out how to do that on your own. One way to do that is to simply uh, have some sort of if statement, if p1.y is greater than a certain value, do something. Or you could wrap it around this statement, if p1.y is less than something, you can set it to a value, although that's a little more dangerous. Now, if we want to have keyboard input, I'll show you how to modify things with keyboard input. We can say that function uh, key pressed uh, is a function we want to have in our program. And then we can say that if key code is... Ooh, um, Let's say 38, 39. Let's see what 39 is. 39 uh, is one of the arrow keys. And so we're going to say if the key code is 39, uh, p2 dot y minus minus. I think we're going up here. Let's see what I have. Uh, perhaps minus equals 10 would be better. Ah, it's the right arrow key. So maybe we want to go with 38.
38 works fine. So 38 will go up. You can do similar statements for other key codes and other types of motion. Finally, the last thing that we really need, aside from a wind condition, is a collision. Now there are a couple ways to do this, um, and uh, they're all about the same. They all ask pretty much the same things. Um, I'm going to show you one way uh, that I'd probably prefer. Um, if I were writing this, I'd want, I'd want things to interact uh, object-wise. So one thing you can say is that uh, you want to say that paddle one did collide. Well, or um, maybe we want to call it collision. So we'll make a function called collision that checks to see whether it collided with the ball. And we'll say that p2.collision with the ball. So we want to see, we want to write these so that if the ball and the paddle collide, either one, switch the vx value of the ball. Now, Obviously, collision belongs to paddle because we're, we're saying that paddle, go inside paddle, find collision, and use ball. Uh, so one thing that we're going to have to do is, or in compare to ball, so one thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, let's go to paddle, let's write a collision method using the same name we'll make it a function that takes in a variable called b. We're going to define some pieces so that we make, uh, so that our pong game is easier to um, interpret, our collision is easier to interpret. So what we'll say is that we have left side of the ball, and we're going to make this a variable. And we're going to say the left side of the ball is equal to b dot x minus b dot r. We're going to say that the ver ball right is equal to b dot x plus b dot r. Ver ball top equals b dot y minus b dot r. And ball, ver ball bottom equals b dot y plus b dot r. And one of the things we're going to say here, we're going to write a statement that says if, so let's think about when the ball is not colliding with the object. Well, the ball is not colliding with the object when the ball left is greater than the paddle right. this dot w plus this dot uh, x. Um, and we know that it's not colliding with the object when the ball dot right, or ball right, is less than this dot w minus this, or this dot x minus this dot w plus. Let me switch these two. We also know that the ball is not colliding with the paddle when we say ball bottom is greater than this dot y plus this dot h. And we also know that the ball is not colliding with the paddle when ball top is less than, or uh, when the ball, uh, let me switch this to ball top. When the ball top is greater, we know it's not colliding. And when the ball bottom is less than this dot y, we know it's above, so it's also not colliding. 
Now, we want to say that this is colliding, and so there's a little trick you can do. Um, programmers have a way of saying that something is not true, or something is not the case. So we want to say if it's not, not colliding, the exclamation point says the entire stuff to the right of it is not true. We're saying this statement, which talks about the ball not colliding with the paddle, is not true, then what do we want to do? We want to say b dot vx equals negative b dot vx. We want to switch the velocity with the ball. In this way, we're pretty sure that we're going to have some sort of collision when all of this is not true. So at this point, let's try this out. Uh, I had to change a bit here because we want to make sure that the ball is ball right is less than x dot uh, this dot x when we have our collision here um, or when we're not colliding and so then we have when we're not not colliding double negatives can be useful uh, so we have our collision method, it's part of paddle, we interact with the ball, and uh, then we have our template where we're saying if the paddle collides with the ball. So let's see the uh, result of this. We'll refresh, and I added in a little bit of motion here, and we see indeed that the ball reflects off of the paddle. And uh, one thing that we can do is we can now finish our pro program by saying that, uh, ooh, let's see what happened there. Okay, uh, we can finish our program by saying that we have um, some condition where we win, or where one side wins. So one thing we can do is we can say we only want to have some of this stuff happening when, uh, when the game is running. So one thing we can do is we can say if score two greater than or less than ten, or, or and score one is less than ten, we want to do all of our game stuff. And let me indent this so that it all works. Okay, so if the scores make sense, if we're within, if both players are not at score 10, we want uh, all the game stuff to show, and otherwise, we want to just write in big text Game over. And um, we'll put this in the middle of the screen. And we'll refresh the page. And uh, we can test this out by changing to um, anything, uh, changing to any arbitrary number of points. You can say if they're less than one, we display this, so we'll immediately see what happens when I beat my opponent. And you can adjust the position and the size to fit what you want. Uh, you can have some message that says, congratulations, player one. Um, all of this is possible. Just make sure that uh, you play around with it and make it your own. 
Hopefully this is giving you some idea of getting over some of the hurdles you experience in your games, um, and we will uh, see you in the next video.